Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the full-length major label debut album from Kyle called Light of Mine. So I'll admit being a little bit surprised that this project is on my schedule. Actually, let me back up for a little bit. I'm surprised this project garnered as much attention as it did to land on my schedule in the first place, given that it seems like it's dropping a good year later than I was expecting. Now, don't get me wrong. I really liked I Spy when it first came out. And if it hadn't been for Lil Yachty, probably would have had a shot from my year-end list of the best hit songs of 2017, or at the very least the honorable mentions. And that's primarily because of Kyle. I liked him as a presence in hip-hop and R&B, almost a little reminiscent of Chance the Rapper, but with more of an R&B angle and an oddly childlike optimism, which tend to take the edge off the sleazier parts of songs like I Spy, and I really like that. Now granted, I Spy was really all I was familiar with from him at that time, but I was a little bit surprised it took him this long to get a major label full-length follow-up, given that his last mixtape with real hype actually dropped in 2015, and you'd think he'd be trying to ride out some of the early wave with an EP or a tape or something early last year. Now don't get me wrong, he actually had two mixtapes in 2017, but it didn't seem like anybody really cared as much. Instead, it looked like Kyle was redoubling his focus and taking his time and pulling together a deep record with features spanning from 2 Chains to Khalid, from Alessia Cara to Kalani. And hell, with as many votes as this was getting, it's at the top of my schedule. I had some hopes that the extra time had really been worth it for this. So what do we get with Light of Mine? Alright, here's the thing. In a funny way, this project should be both better and worse than it actually is. And the easy way to evaluate which side of that Dubai you sit on can be determined just by me describing the record. So if I say, this is a project narrated by Lil Yacht as Lil Boat, where Kyle learns how to relax and not be so hard on himself over waves of pop rap, auto-tune, and bassy chiptune production, I think you'll have an idea of your opinion on it really quickly. And yet, I think from both sides you'd wind up being pretty surprised, because while the concept is more introspective and honest than you might expect, it's also kind of lightweight and shallow in a way you can't quite get around and there are some issues with the lyrics, and if you think the production is just too damn kitschy or cheesy or over exposed to save it, well, you'd probably be wrong there too, as it's just intimate and bubbly enough to be pretty likable. And as such, I kind of fall in the middle of all this. It's a decent, generally enjoyable debut album that sticks more of the ambitions than you would expect, but it's also pretty damn insubstantial and kind of shallow. It's got many of the flaws you would expect for this kind of debut project too. It's decent, but not really great. And we have to start this conversation with Kyle, which is a little tricky because he's a tough presence to define. My initial comparison of Chance the Rapper and how he bends melodic flows wouldn't make sense, except that he's a fair bit more basic and laid back as an MC. Although good enough that when Lil Yachty drops his verse for the Tacked On I Spy, he's handily getting shown up there. Kyle is a better rapper. But he's also a singer here too, so while that combination might put you in the mind of somebody like Drum, especially when you factor in the generally upbeat, charming demeanor, Kyle just is not a singer of the same caliber or presence. He's way too chipper to be compared to Drum. Drake or Khalid, but he also doesn't really fit opposite our current crop of modern pop artists. The autotune is too thick and his personality is way looser, a lot more lackadaisical. And let me stress, that actually is a boon for him. The fact that he genuinely seems to be having fun behind the microphone is a huge asset for his personality. And he's capable of selling more sad or honest or melancholic moments. The comparison I kept returning to, believe it or not, Owl City, not really in vocal timbre or subject matter directly, but a similar adolescent brand of innocence in his delivery that lets him chuckle or crack goofy jokes or make obvious pop culture references. And while there is some angst in some parts of his content, the stakes they feel a lot lower than you would expect for your average hip hop or R&B record in this lane. Now granted, this can be a bit of a double-edged sword when it comes to the content directly. And let's make this abundantly clear, while he does have a lot of likable charisma and Player. Kyle's not exactly a great MC. I mean, his rhymes tend to connect, but beyond the basics of structure, the storytelling is pretty thin. Lil Yachty acting less of a conscience and more of an enabler, telling Kyle just to relax, loosen up a little bit, not be so hard on himself, and in general, just enjoy more of the current success he's got. Which does lead to the slightly weird dynamic where we're expected to feel sorry for Kyle that his success doesn't quite make him as happy or give him any greater sense of self-actualization, 
but again, the framing is lightweight and adolescent enough to mostly excuse this. Uh, mostly. I won't deny that he and Alessia Cara have some youthful chemistry on babies, but it almost leans a little bit too hard on excusing any sense of responsibility because they're kids, and that's a similar brand of this subtext that creeps into a lot of Kyle's songs about women. Open Door shows him at least kind of self-aware about how much of a bad boyfriend he's being, with both clinginess and general disinterest in her life in comparison with just his own, but the framing almost seems dejected that he has to treat her all that well in the relationship, and it's a similar self-focus that pervades the breakup of I Miss Me with Khalid. Again, I appreciate the acknowledgement that relationships can suck away the greater sense of self if they're particularly bad, but to make that the focal point of the breakup and continuously avoid any responsibility thanks to the framing, it can just kind of rub me in the wrong way, even if he does have some good chemistry with Khalid. And then there's the storytelling we get on Rodeo and It's Yours. First, telling a little bit more of a story about a girl who moves to LA and who falls for Kyle because he can provide for her. The second story being about how he lost his virginity, and then he follows it with a goofy skit thanking everything and everyone that helped him to get there, from his friends to Genuine, and then saying that it's all about persistence, and if that she doesn't give you her number, Google map her house. And yeah, I get that the framing's intended to be kind of adolescent and goofy, but it's also not really challenging some really undercooked and occasionally questionable self-interest that could really backfire when exposed to, you know, reality. But hey, it's not all that bad. I do like how he and Kalani have some chemistry and both calling out a girl who is playing games with them. And it's got the sort of cool veneer that they probably both could walk away and they'd be just fine being single. But really what saves most of this album is the production. And what caught me off guard was that while we get a fair few overweight trap bangers like I Spy or the shallow flexing of games with some of the chiptune and Akuyo, the choice of synthesizers is a lot more glitchy, burbling, and technicolor, with songs like games being borderline chiptune, I'll say it again, or ups and downs bringing a jittery, strikingly neon whir, which would then fade into the twinkling but oddly flat synthesizers with thicker multi-tracking in that characterize come and go. Going. And when that breaks into the more conventional trap percussion with similar keyboards, it's got this feeling of synth pop mashed into modern pop trap with a somewhat slapdash but mostly endearing charm to it. There's a lot of melody to these songs, and I like that. It certainly comes to the forefront when you consider the thicker gurgle of the synth group behind the textured symbols on babies, or the watery gloss of I Miss Me, or even the super jaunty pianos driving play with me that are really infectious. And that's before you get the more defined West Coast jams like the thicker auto-tune touching around the hook of open doors against the firmer bass and more interesting drumline. Or the piano anchoring the textured, bassy groove of Rodeo and it's yours. That actually has some sensuous presence to these songs that I could easily imagine Anderson Pock flowing against. Hell, that's probably one of the most apt comparisons, come to think of it. Not quite as organic as Anderson Pock or Chance the Rapper, relying less on samples of soul or old-school hip-hop and more on accessible synth-pop and burbling Lil Yachty-esque trap tunes. It's certainly a more youthful sonic foundation, and while I might personally prefer some of the more organic grooves, a lot of Kyle's production does enhance the framing that's kind of lightweight in his content. It is pretty chipper, it's pretty upbeat, but I can get behind the melodies here. Hell, the only time it doesn't really work for me is the fragmented percussion of Ship Trip, where it almost seems like he's off the beat, but even then it seems to stabilize by the end of the song, and the more personal insecurities in the content come close to saving it. It's probably still the weakest song here, but it's it's not terrible, but as a whole, again, I find myself wanting to like this both more and less than I do. I do find Kyle a really endearing presence, and I'd argue he makes more use of this style of production than Lil Yachty has with similar tones on his Lil Boat projects, and while I wouldn't quite say it gets all the way there, definitely runs long, I Spy probably didn't need to be there, the immaturity can start to test my patience, some of the shrill chipmunk-esque tones against the heavier trap beats can get really annoying for me, and I keep waiting for Kyle to really take another big chance with a very sincere honesty that he brings to some of these songs, but you know what? For me, it's a debut, it's got some promise. And I'm thinking, solid 6 out of 10, recommendation. Probably a lot more for the younger kids who appreciate this a lot more. But otherwise, hell, I can see Kyle building some real success with their album like this, so I'd say check it out. It's pretty good. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I know it's a little bit weird I'm covering this. Frankly, I'm still a little bit mixed on it myself, but hey, you want to buy it? Link's down there below. And I got the poll up there. I'm curious where people fall on this, because I've seen some very intensely negative responses that I'm not sure are warranted. 
Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you guys want to get involved in supporting this channel or helping influence my schedule, the link to my Patreon is right over there, where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule, and once a week for the higher tier contributors, you guys get to add albums, movies, or even a top 10 list to that schedule. More details right over there. If you want to see the schedule, it's down on my Instagram, down there below. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.